I saw NASA's claim about new life being significantly oversold and definitely overhyped in the media. Well, a mysterious NASA press release sparking major attention. They're holding a press conference this time tomorrow afternoon to announce, quote, an astrobiological finding that will impact the search for evidence of extraterrestrial life. All right, Tom, let me start with you. They're touting this. They're the ones who use the terms extraterrestrial life. What do we expect? And much though I thought the thrust of this research was interesting and it had a genuine contribution to make, what was being presented here was significantly overstated. What was basically done in this experiment was a bunch of mud was taken from a extreme, well, extreme as far as us surface dwellers would consider, arsenic rich environment on the basis that the bugs, the bacteria there, may have adapted some sort of arsenic tolerance. Now, after all, these bugs are known to metabolize arsenate to arsenite, and so maybe they can also incorporate that into the structure of their biomolecules. So they grow up these bugs uh, over a period of time and slowly starve the organisms of phosphate while leaving them a constant source of arsenate and then did some analysis on what grew in that medium, tried to work out what was going on and where the arsenic was. The extent of the hype in the press conference is easily highlighted by comparing what is said in the conclusions of the paper, which actually is a far more accurate assessment of what their data support, to what was said in the press conference. Look, no serious scientific discovery is ever prefaced by the facepalm words, this is an artist's rendition of what we think is going on in the cell. And yet, this is what is said in the press conference. So it was associated, it was inside the cell, it was somehow associated with the DNA, and it had this chemical environment, or it, it had an analogous sort of, sort of, it's like sitting at a dinner table, and you and your neighbors, and how we might see that you were all around. Well, what should be in the place of phosphorus looked like it was arsenic. We measured it as arsenic. And so let's look at a, an artist's rendition of, of what we think is going on in the cell. Let's, let's roll that animation, please. So here we're seeing the beautiful, elegant structure of the double helix of DNA. And what I want to highlight is the phosphate backbone, we say, and that's the light orange balls. And it stitches together as we see the edges of DNA. It holds together the DNA, the backbone. And so what we think is happening, what our, our, all the evidence we've collected suggests, is that instead of these, we'll see these these orange, light orange balls disappear. And represented by green balls, we see that arsenic would be substituting for phosphorus in the backbone of DNA. And you can see how critical this component of the DNA might be. Now let's compare this to what is actually said in the conclusions of their science paper. How arsenic insinuates itself into the structure of the biomolecules is unclear. And the mechanism by which such molecules operate are unknown. Now, if they'd have said that in the press conference, I wouldn't be making this video. But then again, they wouldn't have anything to have announced at the press conference. This appears to be the one of the main points that they were pimping. All life that we know of requires carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And it uses those six elements in some of the critical pieces I think we're all familiar with, including DNA and RNA, or the, the information technology of the cell, the proteins, which are the molecular machines, and the lipids, which separates you from everything else. And so by discovering, we've discovered an art organism that can substitute one element for another in these major biomolecules. Okay, so that's the main selling point, that some bugs use one element or another. And if correct, that's very interesting. But there are many examples of life pulling off stuff like this, you know, sulfur-based metabolism, bugs that use amino acids, RNA with enzymatic activity, and various other extremophiles, and so on. Biochemistry is fairly plastic to its environment. So, if this were true, it would be an interesting add-on to that list. But their current results that they have no idea how arsenic insinuates itself into the structure of the bar molecules really don't justify the claims that were made at the press conference, and this sort of bait-and-switch really does undermine the scientific credibility. And much though I hate to speak ill of a fairly competent bunch doing some interesting work, both this conference and the paper seem to be premised on an um, out-of-date and really quite simplistic early biology lesson. To have competent biochemists revert to classifying life by its constituent elements is not only mind-blowingly simplistic, 
given the current state of our knowledge of biochemistry, but it's also significantly outmoded. Yet life reflects the lability and energetic availability of chemicals on the Earth's surface, which is why it's essentially all the interactions of lighter and reactive elements in salty water. Yeah, that's it. Life is basically electrolyte-based, chemically self-replicating systems. Electrolyte-based. I mean, this is implicit in the molecules that she goes on to list here, right? You know, DNA, RNA, both polyelectrolytes, proteins, almost always charge current. Lipids can exist in either the charged or neutral forms in living cells, and all of these require counter elements, mostly in the form of sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium, and there's almost always some transition metals in there of one sort or another. Now, this is not a minor component. Your nerves wouldn't work without this, and it's been estimated that you spend about a a third of your metabolism just maintaining the sodium potassium levels in your cells. And just for yucks, this is a crystal structure of one of these pumps that sits in your cell membranes and, and does this. Basically, this all life contains these elements is a fairly primitive and outdated to the point of being redundant straw man. And vanquishing, it's really not going to impress a lot of scientists. I mean, just show me a life form that can get by without metallic counterites. Just sodium. Are there any life forms out there that can exist without sodium? So on the technical content of the paper, well, I was kind of unimpressed there too. All the metrics for determining the inclusion of arsenate into the biomolecules are very indirect. And while I have some sympathy in that if they've got what they say, which is basically DNA with arsenate in the backbone rather than phosphate, a molecule that I should stress that no one has ever isolated or characterized the problem is that virtually all of the DNA refinement techniques developed over decades and used throughout biochemistry are not likely to work terribly well with the changes in the chemistry of the backbone. And this seems to be something that the authors don't even address. They just seem to work on the basis that these uh, established techniques for analyzing phosphate-based DNA and RNA will automatically be applicable to their hypothesized arsenic-based DNA. It's far from clear that that's going to be the case. However, if it were me, I would have simply done the fiber diffraction pattern on the uh, DNA. Most people know that Crick and Watson did their DNA uh, X-ray diffraction pattern on a DNA fiber, and that's where they got the double helix structure from. Well, the way that it works is the scattering level you get is proportional to the number of electrons in your atoms. So if these folks are right, then they'll basically get the same scattering pattern um, as the structure is essentially the same, but there will be much more intensity in certain areas of it. And from that change in intensity, you could work out how much arsenic was included in the fiber directly. After that, you've got the direct structural evidence of the molecules that you're claiming, and then you can have your press conference, and then everyone is happy. Look, this is a fraction of the reactions on which most terrestrial life is based. Essentially, if these microbes are using arsenate, this would be a tweak to about 10% mm, of it. The remaining 90% is the same as regular bugs. And again, this sort of feeds into this oversell about this being a new form of life. Having said that, I have to admit that I'm kind of skeptical that that's indeed what they have. Biochemistry has a lot of unexpected knock-on effects. For instance, the way that DNA wraps and binds with histones, you would expect to be significantly different, simply because these changes from phosphate to arsenate, and that's going to have a significant effect on gene expression and so on. And in that sense, I have a deep sense of unease about saying that biochemistry is robust enough to incorporate this sort of change whilst remaining viable as a self-replicating system. And this is one of the reasons why I would have asked for more direct evidence that they have indeed exchanged arsenate for phosphate in the structure of their biomolecules before allowing publication. There are also uh, a few fairly minor things that bug me about this paper and the press conference. The first was missing sugar off the list of biological compounds. And it uses those six elements in some of the critical pieces I think we're all familiar with, including DNA and RNA, or the, the information technology of the cell, the proteins, which are the molecular machines, and the lipids, which separates you from everything else. And so by discovering... with this And this from the paper. Although six elements make up the nucleic acids, proteins, lipids, and thus the bulk of living matter, well, given that sugars make up cellulose, and that's the most biologically abundant molecule on Earth, 
and it's also a component of DNA, ADP, ATP, and many proteins in terms of glycosylation. It's just kind of an annoying oversight to have someone claiming to push forward the definition of life while making such a facile, if trivial, omission. Anyway, in summary, for me, looking at this, I found it to be oversold on some pretty weak and indirect evidence. If you want to claim that arsenic is directly incorporated into your biomolecules, get some direct structural data for it, and save the champagne and the press conference until then.